Hey guys, my name is Jose Ocondo. I'm a Chattanooga-based web designer and web flow developer. And in this video, we're gonna be taking this design that I did, um, just a concept unsolicited redesign for the mint.com homepage. And we're gonna be developing it in Webflow. Here's the final product. And uh, we're gonna be doing some cool stuff like using uh, text columns to create this double column layout. We're gonna be using relative and absolute positioning to get content display perfectly aligned inside of these kind of funky swooped images. We're gonna be using Fluxbox to create kind of this off-center two column layout. And uh, last of all, we're gonna be using CSS Grid to create this nicely organized uh, footer. If you want a little bit more information about uh, this design, like um, <laughs> the whole purpose of it and how I tried to improve on the current mint.com homepage, go ahead over to my dribble and uh, there's this kind of lengthy, uh, I probably shouldn't have written this much, but kind of lengthy design rationale for all the decisions that I made. Um, so if that sounds interesting, um, stay with me and let's get designing in Webflow. All right, so with any project, the first thing that I do is style my body tag. Um, <laughs> sounds kind of weird, but if I just click on anywhere in the canvas when there's nothing on it, my body is automatically selected. And uh, if I just click here in the empty selector, I can click body all pages. And I have um, the ability to make, uh, I guess I would call these like global changes to the entire website. Um, here's where you can save yourself a ton of time because uh, for example, just by setting Averta as the font here, um, I no longer have to declare Averta as the font anywhere else. Headings, paragraphs, links, uh, uh, text field, all of those things will be Averta from here on out because uh, as CSS or Cascading Style Sheets implies, anything uh, from parent elements cascades down to its children. Um, by the way, the design here calls for Avenir, which is actually, a, my opinion, a much better um, font. Uh, it's absolutely one of my favorites. Um, I'm so jealous that Mint uses it. <laughs> uh, but I actually don't have it as a web font, and so we're just using Averta as a close alternative. Um, I've also set my font size as 18 pixels. And if you've watched any of my previous episodes, you know that I like to use M's uh, uh, as a unit size for typography, um, as opposed to a hard pixel. And that's because it's more responsive and uh, that kind of thing. Um, so feel free, just Google uh, M's or REMS and that kind of thing. And you can read up on uh, why should you, you should use M's as your uh, font size. Um, I set the line height to 1.75 uh, M's of 18 pixels. In other words, that would be 20, uh, what am I thinking, 27? Um, so this would technically be 27 pixels because it's 18 times 1.75. I probably did the math wrong there. <laughs> and I set my background color to Azure, uh, this very light um, blue-gray. So, so there we are. All right, let's get started adding some elements here, and I'm hoping to keep this to under an hour. Uh, we'll see how far we get. But with this um, uh, nav bar, there's basically three elements. There's a logo, there are the links in the middle, and then there are the more important links on the right. Um, and so to do that, I wanna use Flexbox, and um, to do that, I, I wanna get all of these elements outside of the kind of like um, out of the box container that these nav bars come with. Um, go ahead and add these back in. I wanna make sure that brand is at the top so it's all the way to the left. And then I wanna add one more div block uh, before the nav menu. And we're gonna call it middle nav because it's gonna hold all of those links that were in the middle. Uh, this one over here on the right, uh, we'll call it right nav. And with that div block selected, the one that we added that contains everything, we'll call it nav container. Set it to Fluxbox. Make sure it's set to vertically aligned middle and left aligned is fine. Uh, and then with here with this like brand um, link box, set it to expand, set middle nav to expand and set the right, oops. I thought I named this right nav. Is something else named right nav? Okay, but I don't want the link itself to be named right now. I want the 
parent element to be named right nav and expand. All right. Um, the reason that these are showing up on the left is because uh, elements are automatically set to text align left. So if I just come down here and set it to text align right, uh, everything will go to, to the right. Let me uh, delete one of those elements and copy here. We can just delete these and name this nav link. Let's go ahead and change the color of our nav bar. Um, because when we style the text, we want the white to show up against this off black. All right. Um, so I know that um, this will be white. By the way, I usually like to make these, um, I usually like to set the color of typography in a parent element because usually your, um, like all of the text will be the same color. Um, of course, there's uh, exceptions to that. So like here, all of the, all of these links will be white. Um, but with Webflow, these nav links, for whatever reason, they don't inherit the color of their parent. You have to declare the color in the link itself. All right, I happen to know that these are 15 um, over 18 M's. Okay, and um, they're Avner medium. Um, and so normal here feels just a little bit um, heavy. So let's add four of these. And there's how it works credit cards support blocks. How it works. Um, is it support here or credit cards? All right. Um, there's actually more spacing here than currently in the um, in Webflow, there's 60 pixels of spacing, and if I just scroll up here, uh, this is currently set to 20 on either side. If we make it 30 on either side, there's now 60 pixels of spacing because it's 30 plus 30. And uh, you'll notice that um, this broke and it went down to the bottom line. Um, the reason for that is because we've got these um, these children of nav container. Uh, they're all set to expand, meaning that they're they're all three going to expand with the same intensity. So they're all exactly one third of the parent element. And um, uh, a way to fix that is, uh, so in other words, this box will not get bigger. So as this stuff increases, uh, if it gets grows beyond this line, it's just going to cascade down to the next line. Obviously, we don't want that because we want them to be on the same line. So with middle nav selected, instead of expand, I'm just going to set it to don't shrink. All right, so what's great about that is that this will continue to kind of like stay at the size that it should be, uh, but these will shrink and these will still, the size of this will still always equal the size of this, which is also what we want. All right, so let's add our logo. Um, here it is. This is an SVG that I took from the current Mint, Mint site. Um, a couple of notes. First is that you should always uh, type in your alt text for your images or SVGs. So here we're just going to do Mint logo. The reason that you want to do that is for screen readers. Uh, one is so it makes your images more accessible, and two, um, uh, this is SEO, for SEO. If you have some keywords in this alt text, then uh, it's going to help you to rank higher in terms of uh, organic search results. So uh, always do your alt text, and if we just give this a class name. Um, we can go ahead and give it a specific height. So right now it's 32. You can just set it to one or the other height or width and leave the other alone because um, it'll automatically uh, scale to uh, the correct, um, using the correct ratio. Um, with the nav bar selected, I'm just going to add 60 pixels of padding on either side uh, to bring it in so it's not flush with the edge. And then over here, I'm going to copy and paste. And um, we're going to use a combo class. Combo classes are great uh, for some situations because you can kind of, um, uh, you can borrow from, 
it's really hard for me to do two things at once <laughs> but you can borrow from another class just make a couple of tweaks and um that way you don't have to redo all of the all of the stuff all right so all we did was make it green uh, which is great and then let's go ahead and add our button we'll just call that button and uh, unfortunately we'll have to steal a bunch of stuff from here Where's typography? Here it is. All right, M's. Uh, one thing to note is, um, I think it took me a while to figure this out, but this line in here, since um, since we haven't set it inside of the element itself, this 1.75 M's refers back to the font size for the body tag. So it's 1.75 times 18 as opposed to 1.75 times 8.3 M's. So the way to take care of that is just kind of like scale up and down uh, with the arrow keys. And now since we set it here, it's now referencing this instead of, uh, so it's 15 pixels instead of referencing the 18 of the body tag. All right, and then we wanna make sure we set it to light. The background needs to be transparent. It's got a border around it with the same aquamarine color. And we're gonna use border radius so right now, um, uh, let me get this to the middle. So with right nav, I'll make this flex box as well and align to the right and in the middle. Um, this is not aligning correctly and I'll, I'll share with you why in just a second, but um, yeah. So instead of having these square corners, 90 degree corners, uh, by adding a quarter radius of four pixels, we're just kind of rounding the edges a little bit. And it just gives a little bit of a softer feel, not quite as harsh. And then of course we need to uh, make it green. All right, so with these nav links, um, this is just like a quirk of Webflow. Uh, they'll sometimes get these uh, margins. It's kind of weird. Um, so let's set it to 30 on the right, to push it away from here. And I think th this is sign up free. And this is login. All right, and uh, that is our nav bar. Um, if I, it's always good to test the responsiveness of um, your work. So if I kind of scroll in here, um, hmm. All right, so maybe if we bring this down to 40, keep it from breaking. Or I wonder, um, okay, so this is more like, this is more like 20. All right, so there it doesn't break. I like how it looks with the 30 on either side. So let's see if we can make brand, if we can make this one shrink if need be. No, I didn't like that. What if this is don't shrink? No. You know what? I actually don't think we need this. And this could be 20. This could be 20. And let's start bringing this in. I guess we will just have to leave it at 20. It's kind of unfortunate, but um, it's important to make sure that your stuff is responsive. Whoops. All right, still looks okay. Let's move on to the header. We're gonna add a section. And uh, you always wanna make sure that you um, assign the correct tag uh, for proper HTML um, markup and to help with search engines crawling your site. So we'll call this header. 
And we're doing something interesting with this header. Um, we're gonna let the hero image kind of dictate its size. Um, reason for that is because it has this kind of like swoop. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna give this a class of hero image and set, um, so if I come over here to the design, you can kind of see it like takes up about 75% of the width. So if I just do width is 75%, uh, you'll see it kind of has the right amount now. Maybe it's a little too small, maybe 80%. Um, okay, yeah, that feels better. And so with the section selected, let's give it a class of header. I can set the text align to right. Same thing that we did with the text up here that now shifts the image to the right. And now the height of header is determined by the height of this image. Okay, it's important to know um, for a specific reason in just a second. All right, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the positioning of the header to relative. And um, what that means is that when I drag in a new div block, and we'll just call it um, header content and set its positioning to absolute and all. It now means that it's taking up um, the full kind of height and width of its container, which is uh, the next available parent element that has a positioning of relative. So you see down here, it's targeting header. Um, so if I give it a background color just so that you could see it, uh, it's making that area black. Okay. All right, then we're gonna make it flexbox and position everything in the middle so that when I add a new block, it's gonna be right dead center in the middle, right where we want it. Okay, next we're gonna add a container class and we're gonna be reusing this container class across the whole page. And it's essentially the one of the most foundational kind of building blocks of making a responsive site. So here's what I mean. If I set the width as a percentage, as opposed to a fixed pixel like 1,320, uh, it means that as I scale in um, the browser, uh, it's still 85% of the width. So it's scaling along um, with the browser. Um, next, we'll add a heading. And let's go ahead and steal this text. Um, when I brought it in, you'll notice that um, uh, if I hover over it, there's like a B for bold text, and then the heading is outside of it. And that's because it's got a bold attached to it. So I'm just going to clear the formatting to get rid of that. Um, and then with the header content selected, um, I'll set the text align to left, which will push it to the correct side. And um, I worked on this video earlier, so this is the second time I'm filming this. <laughs> Um, so if, if I click on this element, same thing with that we, we did with the body tag. If I click in the empty space here and do all H1 headings, uh, I'm able to set the, um, the style for every H1 heading that's going to appear throughout the whole website. Um, so that's very key. So I set my font size here. That's about 50 pixels. I set the line height. Uh, so that's 1.25 times 50 and uh, Averta semi bold. Um, if I go back to the design, you'll notice that there's a line break after of. Um, so there's two ways to do that. One is to just go in here and click enter. And uh, now I've got my um, <laughs> now I've got my line break where I want it. But it's actually not ideal because if I come down to mobile, um, you'll notice that there's this weird line break. Your should fit right here, but it doesn't because there's an artificial break right here. All right, so um, the way I like to handle this is um, let's add like a custom class like hero h1. And we give it a max width. So we'll just start off with 450 for now. And I'll slowly increase it until uh, it breaks where I want it. So around 600 pixels. So what's great about that is if I go down to mobile again, your is now showing up in the in the right spot. It's breaking naturally. So I still got the line break that I want here on desktop, but on mobile, it's looking good. All right. 
Um, the next thing is a paragraph. Um, and let me go ahead and steal this. Um, just for the sake of time, I am going to uh, just have a little line break there. And um, since we already set the typography in the body tag, so if I go to body, body all pages, this stuff is already set. I don't have to do anything with this paragraph. It's already has a stylings that it should have according to this. Um, the one thing I do want to do is um, there's 20 pixels of margin at the bottom and the top. So I'm just going to give this a subclass or a class of hero subheadline. Just give it that 20 pixels bottom and top. All right, next we're going to add a button. This button is going to have a filled background, but we can still use the button class that we already created and just use a combo class um, just to make a couple of tweaks um, so we don't have to recreate everything. So I'm just going to take change the font to white, the background to our blue, and take off the green border. And there we are. Um, this is going to say sign up free. All right, and then we're going to add a text link. We'll call it text link. <laughs> and uh, here, um, it's going to introduce that um, bold text. And that's fine here because uh, to accomplish the same thing, I'd have to click here, make a span, create a class for that span. Uh, it's just kind of annoying. So uh, what it's doing in this in the HTML is it's wrapping it in a uh, strong tag, a strong equals bold. And so it's kind of doing the same thing we would do if we wrapped it in a span and um, gave it some like uh, CSS styling to make it bold. Uh, so there it's fine. Let's push it away to the right, about 20 pixels. Um, let's take off the underline. Um, make sure we declare it as black. And uh, what I'm going to do is give it three pixels of padding and then a bottom border with blue. There we go. Um, the reason I didn't use this underline is because, one, I feel like it's nicer for it to be just a little bit um, further down from the text, not quite up so close. And secondly, I can't change the color of that underline unless I change the color of all the text as well. Um, so that's why I used a bottom border as opposed to the underline. All right, so looking pretty good. Um, unless I'm wrong, I think that's our... Um, I think that's the header. Uh, maybe the one thing is with the hero. So let me go back to all H1. I think I had a little bit of reducing of the character spacing. Um, okay. So with hero H1, I need to lower this until your cascades down to the next. All right, there we go. Uh, next, we're going to start this next um, part of the website that has the benefits of using Mint. And whenever you uh, start designing a, a new piece of content or like a new group of content, you always want to introduce a section that's letting search engines know, um, oh, okay, this, this content is grouped together. Um, it's kind of like the chapter of a book, like when you start something, like a, a new piece of content, you want to start a new chapter just to let the the reader know like oh something new is starting so same thing with sections then we're going to add our diff block container and um, notice with the container uh, it's actually flush to the left uh, that's because up here um, the reason it's in the middle is we were using flexbox to push it to the middle so all we have to do is set the um, margins on left and right to auto and now it's going to appear 
uh, horizontally middle aligned. All right. Next, I'm going to add another div block inside of my container, and it's going to say, uh, or it's going to be, um, we'll call it benefits parent. Benefits parent. Okay. And uh, it's going to be hard to see this at the moment, but what I'm going to do is uh, down here in the typography section, I can create columns. So I'm going to set the columns to two. All right. So right now you can't really see anything. Let me add another div block. And now you can see the columns. Uh, so with this div block, I'll call it a benefits child. All right. And when you're using um, when you're using these like text columns, the children of the column needs to be in line block. Uh, I'm not sure why. I just through trial and error I've discovered that it needs to be that. Otherwise, you have some really weird line breaks. Um, okay, we're not quite done with styling yet, but we need to add some stuff so that this starts to make sense. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is add an image. And I think the first one is the budgets. Um, if I were taking my time with this, I would go ahead and fill out the alt text, but um, we've already talked about that. Um, let me call this spot illustration. And um, uh, I just from having worked at this previously, I know that all of these are about 160 pixels tall. So, um, so here I'm just going to set the max to 160 pixels. Okay. Underneath that spot illustration, there's going to be a heading. Oh, where'd my heading go? Is it in there? No. Okay, let's try that again. A heading. <laughs> there we go. And we're going to set it to H2. Now, what these H1 through H6 means is that you're kind of like setting up the uh, table of contents of your book. Uh, the website being the book, of course. So H1 is the title of the book. H2 are the immediate chapters within that book. And uh, H3 would be like sections of the H2. H4 would be sections of the H3 and so on and so forth. All right. So I've already, um, like I said, I was working on this tutorial earlier. So I've already styled my H2 with the appropriate um, uh, font stylings there. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Benefits Child and set it to Align Middle. And let's go ahead and copy this. Create budgets that stick. And then I'm going to add a paragraph. And let's go ahead and copy this. All right. Now, I want to go ahead and give these paragraphs a max width. Um, so I want them to, to kind of feel like this is like a block, a block of content. So let's go ahead and give it a 500 max width, max width, 500. Uh, we can make it, make it a little bit smaller, like 490. Um, There we go. All right. Okay. So one thing I'm noticing is with the container, I knew this would happen. Uh, benefits container. I want to set it to middle align. And that's going to push the two columns towards the middle. So let me turn on x-ray mode. Uh, you can't see the second column, but um, it's pushing this to the middle as opposed to being left aligned. And uh, what's nice about that is I can take off uh, this in the benefits cell. I can take off the middle aligned. Um, I love for there to be as little uh, code as possible. <laughs> so um, really quickly, let me add a new um, just like spacer. Oh, why did that end up there? Collapse all. Uh, 
and just make it like 100 VH, just so that I can scroll down and see what I'm working with. Okay, I'll delete that later. And then the very last thing is we're gonna use a link block to create our button. The reason we can't use the button button <laughs> is because I used a little icon here uh, just to give these a little bit of these buttons some interest. Um, and so let's do uh, icon button. And just gonna figure out the padding really quick. 10 top and bottom and 15 on the sides. Okay, we know that it's got a border of blue. Oops, blue and the radius. Let's add some text. Er, where's the text? Okay, I'm gonna do my very best not to add the CSS class to this, because like I said, I like to do as little code as possible. Uh, so I'm gonna do 15 over 18 M's. Um, I know that's upper, or it's uh, all caps, uh, no underline. So I do black. Um, and unless I'm mistaken, that's everything. Looks like it's a, just a little bit bolder. So let's go from normal to semi-bold. All right, and then it says create your first budget. And then inside of that uh, button, oops, I'm in the wrong thing. I'm gonna add the or my little uh, budget icon thing. Um, all right, so the reason that they're stacking on top of each other as opposed to side by side is because this text block is set to uh, display block, meaning um, it's kind of like saying this element is greedy for space. It wants the whole row. It will not share that row with any other element. Um, so, uh, so we could do, one of two things. We could uh, give this a class of display inline lock, and it would fix that. Um, but um, or I could use Fluxbox, and uh, um, but it's messing up. It's going. It's expanding to the full width. So. Um, I didn't want to have to assign CSS to this, but oh, I guess I'll have to. Okay, so we'll do icon button text. So we'll make an inline block that we spoke about before, and there's about 10 pixels of margin to the left to push it away from this icon. The last thing is let's make sure all of the spacing is correct. So there's 20 pixels of spacing above the icon button. There's 10 here, and this is supposed to be 30. Um, this is set to 30. Okay, perfect. So all that spacing is correct. So now I can just, oh, um, I need to set, but if it's child, I need to set it to 120 pixels of spacing below. So if I turn on X-ray mode, I hover over this, and you'll see that spacing below the element. All right, now if I copy and duplicate three, four, five, six, there's now six of these uh, in a, a nice two column layout. One thing I wanna do is with a parent, um, you know, right now there's nice space in between these two, but if I were to start bringing this, these in, you'll see it gets just a little bit uh, tight um, so I can change the spacing in between these two, um, like maybe 30, 30 M's, whoops, 30 pixels is better. Um, and that just ensures that there's plenty of space between uh, our two elements. Let me get out of X-ray mode. Okay. And then with this one, this child, we're gonna add a combo class. We'll just do margin top 120 and set its to 120. And that's pushing it down so that they have a more of a staggered layout. That's kind of what I wanted. 
All right, the last thing I want to check is the responsiveness of, uh, you know, like here on this big wide screen, this is flush. So it looks nice. Um, but I want to make sure that as this responds down, Okay, so here it's getting a little too close to um, to this right here. So what I can do is let's find our hero image and we can give this kind of like a minimum uh, a minimum width. Let's do something like 960. Um, and actually that's perfect. So um, so at least there's like this. This looks like maybe 50 or 60 pixels, we'll know at least there'll be that spacing right there. I'm gonna come back out. Okay, everything is responding nicely. I think I saw this button break. Oh, it was that this came down to a second line, okay. Yeah, that might happen, so. But uh, very few computers have quite this, like, uh, the small of a screen. Um, so I think we're okay. How much is that? 992 pixels. Yeah, there are very few browsers that are quite that small. All right, so uh, what's left for this section is basically just to change all of these to the correct um, uh, illustrations and text. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, but I'll fast forward it uh, when I edit it. So I'll meet you on the other side. Mm -hmm. So I should have finished fast forwarding and um, uh, I wanted to stop here because we're going to be using Font Awesome to um, add our, <laughs> uh, our social media icon there. Um, so if you go to Font Awesome, this is a great collection of thousands of icons. They have some that are free and they have some that are paid for or you have to pay to use. Um, the social media ones are free so you can just download the web font, upload it to your website. And um, it's a great way, easy way to, um, uh, easy way to add icons, social media icons. So let's go ahead and add a text there. We can get rid of this, and then we'll call this um, F A Brand for Font Awesome, uh, Font Awesome Brands. Change it to blue, and copy the text there. And uh, our icon is not showing up. All right, so to get it to stack on the same line, set the positioning to inline block, and it is 24 pixels. So 24 over 18 M's. And um, that looks good. Uh, wait, this needs to say download. So if I copy and paste, um, uh, what I can do is uh, do FA button to give these a combo class and just give them five pixels of uh, margin left and right so that they're 10. And let's copy this Apple logo. And there we are. Um, okay. So I think that does it for this section. Um, let's go ahead and work now on this call to action section. It's gonna be interesting because this swoop here uh, is actually um, above <laughs> this section. Uh, so this is gonna be, this is gonna get interesting. All right, so again, anytime we have new content, a new block of content, we need to add a section. So I'll just add that there and we'll call it CTA section. And we're essentially going to do the same thing with um, the content that we did with this. So instead of giving it some sort of height, I'm just going to add our image. Choose image. Here it is. All right. And so now this image is um, itself setting the height of the container. 
Again, if I was doing this, I'd send an alt text there, but I don't need to do that. And then uh, with the CTA section selected, add a new div block. Uh, we'll call it CTA content. That needs to be absolute full. And you'll notice that right now it's targeting the body. So it's actually taking up this entire screen here. And that's because we need to go to CTA section and set it to relative. All right. So now if I click on here, I'm now clicking on CTA content and then I can add a div block and it's going to be right in the middle and we need to give it a class of container. All right. And then we'll just go ahead and add another H2 heading H2 and um, let's copy and paste sign up for men today. Um, remove that formatting. And with container, we can just add a combo class that says text align center. We'll add a paragraph. Um, you know, one thing I might want to do is uh, Let's change this name to uh, CTA container. And um, essentially, like, uh, I want the container to be uh, this width. So 600, and, let's just make it run it off to 650 pixels. Um, so max 650. Okay. Um, because I want to add my form here. Where's the form block? Here it is. And so uh, it'll take up that width uh, of our container. So let's get rid of these things. All we need is the field and the submit button uh, with form. Let's call it CTA form. We can make it flexbox align center and align middle. Okay. Great. Um, let's get our spacing right. So uh, that should probably be 40, not 43. And 10. Let's make sure that 10 is there. It is. Um, I don't want that 30 there because it's going to throw off the alignment. So let's make it margin top 0. And with CTA form, we can make this 40. All right, um, CTA input field. Uh, let's remove that 10 pixels margin bottom. Um, actually with CTA form, I wonder if we can make it fully expand. All right, that didn't do anything, okay. With the input field, I want to get rid of the background color. Um, enter your email. And let's take off this so we can see what we're working with. Um, we need to set the font to our dark. And I want even the placeholder text to be dark slate gray. There we go. Uh, it's a little bit too small. So let's make sure, even though it's set to 18 pixels here, that's not 18. And that's just probably how these forms work. So let's go set this to 1M and uh, CTA submit. Actually, I wonder if I could just set it to button, blue button. Let's try that. Button, blue button. Okay, and then with CTA form, uh, let's set it to a background of white at about 60% or so. Um, is it 60? Yeah. Let's get rid of that border on the input field. Okay, and then 
blue button. Let's actually duplicate the class as opposed to a new combo class and we'll call it CTA button. Um, so I don't want it to have a corner radius of four. I want it to have a corner radius of two because when I make the CTA form four, it's just gonna feel a little more natural, like it's kind of like cascading in. And then let's give it five pixels of padding, top, bottom, and right. right so you see kind of what I mean, that four and that two, it feels like they're kind of related. Um, and I think this is more like 20 as opposed to 10. And sign up free. All right, I like that. Let's make sure everything is looking nice and responsive. even at the smallest size. It's uh, a little tight, but it still works. Okay. And then um, I need to use, with the CTA section, I'm gonna use negative uh, margin to make sure that this kind of overlaps with this. And I'm gonna be using uh, viewport width to determine, because I want it to be nice and responsive. So I'm going to use something like negative 10 viewport width. Um, that's pushing it up above, uh, maybe just a little bit more. I want it to be like right there, like kind of like right at this. Um, and so since it's attached to the viewport width, as the viewport gets smaller, it's going to bump um, this section down. Um, another option would be to have like hard pixels, like negative 200 pixels, for example. And um, the problem with that is when I start scrolling it in since it's fixed, actually that doesn't look too bad. You know what, I'm gonna leave that there. I think that looks good. Okay. Um, all right. So we finished up our CTA section. Our next section is this uh, kind of like blog teasers. So again, since we're moving on to like a new block of content, let's go ahead and add a new section. Um, and the tag here, make it section. Add a div block and give it our container class. And then in that container class, add a new div block. <laughs> You'll see why in a second with our heading. Make sure it's H2. Okay, with that div block, I'm just gonna call it text align center. And that way I can add these two elements and they're gonna be center aligned. I just looked at it before I closed it, and this had a max width of 650. And um, uh, you know, even though this is set to middle align, this is not um, in the middle for whatever reason. So we can just set this to uh, auto align on both sides and that works. All right, let's add a new dev block and this is gonna be our blog teaser parent. And then we'll have another dev block that will be blog teaser child. In the child, I'm gonna add another dev block <laughs> and call it a blog teaser thumbnail. And in that dev block, I'm gonna add an image. And let's go ahead and make it the first one, which I think is this one. All 
All right, so essentially this is about 40% of the width and this is about 60. Uh, so with the blog teaser thumbnail, I'm gonna set the width to 60%, sorry, 40%. Right. Uh, I want to push this away from the top uh, 60 pixels. Whoops. So that would be with the parent. Move that to 60. Okay. And then I want to add a new div block over here. Um, whoops. I want to make sure the thumbnail is above. And set it to, we'll call it blog teaser. Copy, 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 and um, okay. With the blog teaser child, I want to use Flexbox to center align this with the photo and add a text. So there's this kind of like, um, zoom in a little bit, there's like this badge here. Um, so it looks like it's two elements, but it's really just one. It's essentially like a button, but that's it's not clickable. Um, all right, so um, let's call it badge. It's 12 over 18 M's, all caps. Um, has about 1.25 pixels of letter spacing, character spacing, I guess it's called. And It is white and it's got a background of that um, sea green and five pixels top and bottom, 10 on the side. So five there, 10 there. Whoa, that seems like a lot. Okay, I think it's because of this. So let's set this to 1M. There we go. Maybe 1.25, okay. And then it probably has a little bit of border radius and since it's smaller, instead of four, let's do two. All right, and that's looking good. Let's push all this content away. Blog teaser copy by adding 60 pixels of padding. And there we go. Next, we want to add a heading, and these will be H3s, not H2s. Remember, since this heading, these three things will be inside of this section. This H2 is kind of like the chapter, and then this H3 is kind of like a section within the chapter. And then with the blog teaser copy, let's set it to align left. And let's just steal this. All right, and then add a paragraph. And I don't think we need to add um, uh, okay, a couple of things. I don't think we need to add a max width here. This needs to be set to inline block, not block. Again, block, it's taking up the entire width of the container. And then with the thumbnail selected, um, this is kind of like the same issue we ran into with the nav bar. It needs to be do not shrink. Awesome. Last thing I'll do is add that little bit of spacing. There's 40 pixels um, of spacing down below. Oops. I need to be on blog teaser child. There we go. If I go to there, hover over there, you'll see the, you'll see the 40 pixels down here. All right, so if I copy that block user child, go to block user parent and just paste three times. I now have my uh, three uh, article teasers there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this content out. I'll fast forward so you don't have to wait through that and I'll see you on the other side. All right, so we're back. We've got all three of our articles in. So all we have left is um, our footer. So let's go ahead and add a new section. Um, let's delete our spacer, we probably don't need it now. And we'll call this footer. 
and um, make sure that I set the tag to footer. All right, to get that swoop, I'm using an SVG. Uh, let's go ahead and add it in there. Um, I'll give it a CSS class of swoop and height or width. I want to set to 100. Okay, and then with footer, I want to add a div block and call it footer inner and set its background color to that same color. And there's a little bit of padding above, or I guess it's like kind of like this area here. So about 80 pixels. Let's just set that right there. Is that right? Oops, I said this in the wrong place. Okay. That's why I was like, why is it showing up weird? Okay, there we go. Um, I've noticed this with SVGs. If I go to preview, there's kind of like this like one pixel line. Uh, I don't know why that happens. Uh, this sometimes does. So I just will do minus one pixels of margin and uh, kind of eliminated that little line. All right, then we'll add um, a link block and Inside of that link block, we'll add our dark logo. Uh, with logo selected, we'll give it our logo class. And with the link block, we'll call it footer logo and set it to margin auto, center align. There we are. Footer inner, let's add a new, okay, actually wait. Um, so I'm going to be using CSS grid uh, <laughs> um, just to do all of this, just because, um, well, first of all, this should be aligned left like so. Um, it'll just be really easy to create these columns with CSS grid. So sorry to switch back and forth. We need one, two, three, four, five columns and one, two rows. All right. So with footer inner selected, let me add a grid. Um, it needs, whoops, like I said, one, two, three, four, five columns, two rows. We name class, we'll call it footer grid. And um, let's reduce the space between the columns. Um, we can go ahead and add this spacing between these two rows. So this can be 60, whoops. 960. There we go. Okay. Um, and with, uh, oh, I need to push it away from the logo. Uh, 50. All right. So just click 50. Um, with CSS grid, what I like to do is just add a div block and add everything in there. Because if I add the elements kind of like solo, uh, things can get a little screwy. Um, so add that in there, and then this will be download. You know what I forgot to do is, um, I forgot to add my container. Actually, no, that works. I guess maybe just Okay, yeah. Container. Okay, there we go. All right, this is going to be like our footer column header. And it's obviously somewhat bold 21 pixels. So 21 over 18 M's. Um, and it's somewhat bold. So that looks about correct. Then let's steal my con button. These buttons. So that's the Google Play one. And this is this one. Okay. 
um, App Store, Google Play. I think here I changed it. App Store, Play. All right, and then um, what I'll do is I'll add like footer FA button as a combo class. And I want to set these to block to make sure. Actually, no, I don't want to do that yet. Uh, let's give it a fixed width because I don't like how this button ends here. So if I just do width, let's start at 200. Whoops. I'm just kind of like. Okay, if I just kind of like work my way up. There. 168 pixels uh, looks about right. And it looks like it's 15 as opposed to 20. Let's change this to 15. Um, these have 20 pixels of margin bottom. All right, there we are. Let's add a new to block and paste that in there. Call, make this how it works. And then this needs to be a text link because these are these are links underneath these little column headers of so footer link. And um, I think these are like yeah, 60% of the color, 15 pixels. So 15 over 18 M's, um, maybe 1.5 M line height, just a little bit of character spacing, um, no underline, they are black, but 60%. And uh, I think that's it. Um, it's gonna be way too much of a pain to <laughs> type all of these out. So I'll just do a couple like mint bills and maybe the longest one, alerts and advice. Mint bills. So obviously I need to change these to inline block, all right? And then I think there's a little bit of spacing, seven, that probably should be five pixels of spacing. Okay, how many are there in this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, seven. All right, now, um, so here's where the magic happens is if I hold option, I can just duplicate these. So now it's tips and into it. And I think there's also one down here. So I go to the div block. Just copy it down there. This is policies. And I think there's just three. One, two, three, four. Uh, maybe with a footer inner, let me go ahead and add the spacing here, 60. There we go. All right. Um, one, two, three, four, five. And this one has six. So I need to delete two from here and one from here. And let's just give these just a little bit more spacing. Let's do 1.75. All right, that feels like it's breathing a little better. And then with the div block selected, copy over here. And this is gonna be follow. Let me delete these. And uh, basically I'm just gonna steal this, uh, but I'm gonna call it um, uh, footer social. Because they need to be inline block. Four, 
I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Oops. I made a mistake. So these need to be links. So FA brand footer social. FA brand footer social. So that's the Twitter bird. Two, three, four. And I just need to add the, get rid of the underline there. Sorry about that. But there's only four, so. There needs to be more spacing between them. Oops. We'll take care of that in a second. Let's just figure that out, 20 pixels. Um, so we'll just add that here, 20 pixels. And um, I'd like for them to be middle aligned. So I think what I can do is add a div block, add this here, and then just scoot these in here. Have them middle aligned. And let's do inline block again. Whoop. That's annoying. Um, let's do inline block. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, I guess with this we can do footer social icon column and just set this to vertical. Hmm, that didn't work either. I think it might be because um, oh okay. I think what I need to do is change it from one frame to auto. There we are, and uh, that feels better. Okay, and then the last thing is. It's basically just one paragraph. So I think I can add that just by going to here, adding a paragraph, um, and then adding footer link. Even though it's not a link, I just want to have the same styles. And then here's the beauty of CSS Grid is that I can just stretch this all the way to the right. It'll take up uh, the same width as the columns above it. But if I click out of here, this now left aligns perfectly with this, how it works. Um, it would be really hard to do that with Flexbox, almost impossible. Uh, so CSS Grid is just absolutely perfect for uh, what we need to do with this footer. Um, and the last thing we need to do is just move this whole footer up a little bit. So let's try like 200 pixels like we did before. And um, <laughs> uh, the footer is showing up over this. So what we can do with um, this whole section is just set it to Z index two. So I go to relative Z index two, and now it's gonna show up on top of the footer. So that's perfect. And then I realized that um, this probably needs to come down. So CTA section, uh, this one. Let's try minus 200 and see what happens here. Whoops, it's too much. Maybe something like that. No, I think minus 100 looks better. All right, let's check out the responsiveness. All right, still looking good. I think it looks a little tight uh, when it's like right here. So let's try using VW. 
Minus six, maybe? So what does that look like here? Ah, oh, yeah, that looks better. Okay. Um, okay. The footer is a little bit tight here. Um, But I think uh, once we got into tablet, we'd increase the container size. Um, and uh, I think that would be okay. All right, so I don't think we left anything out. I think that's pretty much it. We finished this page. Uh, I'm not quite sure how long it's been, but <laughs> I hope that was about an hour. Um, if you followed along through the whole video, thanks so much. Um, for following along. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, if it was, make sure that you subscribe uh, to my channel and I'm hoping to keep doing these videos so that you keep getting ideas on how to develop your own Webflow sites. Um, I love Webflow. It's been an incredible uh, resource to me in my freelance career. I hope it is for you and yours. And uh, make sure you hit subscribe so that you get notifications of videos that come up soon and uh, all that jazz. So thanks for sticking with me. Um, it is 9.58 at night. Have a good night.